I was Muslim, my dad was an imam, and the past couple years I'm just not convinced of the truthfulness of the religion and its claims that it makes. We seem to be told that, you know, if you want something, you pray for it. If you want to be healed, you pray for it. We would expect to see certain things, like the people that are prayed for get healed more often than people that don't. But we just don't see that. So I don't want to go to hell. That would be the worst thing for me to be in hell forever as, you know, someone who's willingly denying. Like, it's, it's a completely against my interests. It would be like the worst thing that I could choose to do. So I was Muslim, my dad was an imam, um, and you know, very much into da'wah and all that. He read and wrote Arabic. I just, uh, in the past couple years, I'm just not convinced of the truthfulness of the religion and its claims that it makes. Right, right. So, can I, can I just, we're getting, we're a, getting lot a lot of feedback, feedback echo echo coming echo when, when I'm when speaking. I'm speaking. Oh, okay. Let me mic. Let me mute up here. So you may have another tab open. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn that, turn that off. off. Uh, let's see. I'm outside. Let me close YouTube. How about now? Yeah, let's, yeah, have, a let's have a look. No, okay. no. It's, it's still giving, giving me feedback. Me feedback, and feedback and echo. Echo. Let's see what else is open. <laughs> uh, let me check my tabs. Um, okay. Um, any better? Let me see. Let me see. No, it's no, still, it's still a... what, what we'll do, you, you ask the question. What I'll do is I'll mute you uh, when, uh, I'm, when speaking, I'm speaking. So that will hopefully prevent the, the echo, echo from happening. happening. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, so basically, I just, I'm not really convinced anymore. And I found that the, I've looked at a lot of different arguments. The uh, cosmological arguments seem reasonably compelling. Um, I've looked at some of the counter arguments to that. Um, the divine hiddenness argument, I think, is especially compelling. Um, and at, at, at the end of the day, all those common criticisms of Islam I've looked at, I don't think they are that important to argue, like Aisha's age and all that. Like, if the law is true, it's, a, it's <clears throat> by way of divine um, decree, it's okay. But... Um, Long story short, like the main issue I see is kind of the rationality of punishing people that have um, reasonable disbelief and on the opposite, sort of rewarding people that have unreasonable belief. So I'll, I'll mute myself now. Okay, so before we um, you know, get into that topic, it's an interesting topic. Um, just tell me a little bit about yourself. I, I, I'm, I'm from your, your accent. I'm, I'm, predi I'm predicting or assuming that you're from the States. Is that correct? That's correct. And um, do you believe in a creator or do you just simply believe that there is nothing out there? Um, I think it's possible, but I don't, I don't believe it doesn't seem like a creator. It's more, it's more of like a cosmic nihilism. I don't think even if there is a creator that he's involved with the affairs of us human beings. And I think that when I see what I observe in the world and in the universe, it seems much more consistent with uh, cosmic nihilism. So would you accept then that your view, if there was a creator, uh, that he would be more involved in a way, when you say more involved, I'm presuming you're saying that suffering and these things wouldn't be happening uh would you say that your your view your subjective view uh, therefore is that god if there is a god he doesn't involve himself simply because you see suffering and you see problems in the world would that be a fair, a fair statement um yeah I, I i would i would agree with that um among other things uh, i think the divine evil is a reasonable argument like prayer doesn't seem to come true. Um, yeah, that's that's some of the reasons. Okay. Would you accept that your view on the matter would be very limited because wisdom or per perfect wisdom would mean that you would actually know the, uh, the reasons behind everything in a maximally perfect way? And since we don't have the maximally perfect uh, attribute of knowledge or being all-knowing, all 
that there will definitely be a huge limitation on our assessment of why of these why things are happening. Would you accept that? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's definitely a reasonable um, way of explaining. But the thing that I've seen is that it's not just that. It's many, many other things no, that have to kind of be... Go ahead. Okay. Sure, go ahead. So now knowing and, and uh, understanding the fact that we have this limitation to then create it, to then make it into a criteria for accepting or denying either the existence of God or whether God intervenes within uh, our lives, you would, you would have to, I, I would hope, accept that because of that limitation of knowledge, it's, it's very likely that we could be right or wrong on this, on this, on this assumption. assumption. Yeah, uh, we could be right or wrong. It's in, in fact, not, not, not only could be accept that. Yeah, not, not only could it be right or wrong, it seems that what we observe is indistinguishable from there being a God or not. Yeah, but the point I'm trying to make to you is that um, the point that I'm trying to make to you is that recognizing that we have these limitations, therefore we cannot use this criteria to judge whether God intervenes or he doesn't intervene or whether he exists or he doesn't exist. Because a, 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 uh, a criteria that's flawed or has many limitations cannot then arrive necessarily at certainty. Would you accept that? Sure, but I think some of the line of that, 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 that line of the, that argument is, is I don't agree with. What, what, what part of that do you not agree with? I would I would have issue with that. Um, we seem to be um, told that you know if you want something you pray for it. Um, you know God, if you if you you know if you want to be healed you pray for it. But we just don't. We would expect to see certain things like maybe someone the people that are prayed for get healed more often than people that don't. But we just don't see that. So. Yes, the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, but on the same token, absence of certain things where you would expect to see it is a problem. And then I guess it's, it just ties into the divine hiddenness. Like, if why would God want to be so hidden to not make himself um, approachable or, or realizable? So, so Idris, I think we've moved the argument on. So the, the initial point was... Um, God intervening or not intervening, and that becoming, that becoming an issue. And I think we've accepted that. that. Okay, okay. That, that, that perhaps not, not a, a. Sorry, I'm sorry, because gonna... we're getting a lot of feedback. Um, so you, you've, in, in essence, you've agreed that that's not a criteria that can that can necessarily come up with um, or come to a conclusion of certainty of any sort. So we've moved on now to prayer. We've moved on to another topic now, which now, is that, that why is why it, is that, it that, that do not. Do not see, Sorry, brother. I'm just going to mute you. Sorry, I, I will. I will let you come in. When I can't let you come in, I'll, I'll unmute you. Sorry. Um, so now, so the, now, the, now the issue, issue arises, arises which, is, is, um, which is basically prayer. And why is it that you know? And I think there was a study done, for example, where somebody said, "Okay, we're going to get a group that's going to pray for a certain thing, and a group that's not going to pray for a certain thing, and then we're going to assess which one has a better outcome to assess whether prayer works or it doesn't work." Now. I think it's an incredibly arrogant way for human beings to sort of assess God, thinking somehow that God does not know what they're doing and what they're trying to establish here through their own, uh, you know, um, uh, analysis, as it were. It's almost like, you know, trying to play the Jedi mind trick on God, uh, you know. Now, the, the point I'm trying to make to you here, Idris, is that from our perspective, from a Muslim perspective, for example, because obviously we're Muslims, uh, how are the different ways that a prayer is answered? Are you aware of that? Yes, I'm aware. So either you can get what you ask for, or Allah will replace it with something that is better. Okay. Uh, or Allah may retain it for something that is better in the hereafter because he knows giving you what uh, you want may actually not be better for you in this world, right? I think the point is, Idris, is how do we establish that that claim that is being made 
is true or false. That's the important thing. thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, we we can argue, well, I prayed for, you know, a million pounds, but I never received a million pounds. Therefore, God clearly didn't hear me. God, God, yeah, there, God can't be, can't exist or God uh, exists, but he doesn't interfere in human, uh, you know, human, uh, you know, um, life because I asked God and God didn't give me this. This would be a very shallow understanding of how prayer works, because in the Islamic perspective, that million pounds could actually be your downfall. And so Allah may replace it with something that is better. Now, the point is, as I said to you, how do we establish that that is actually true and that we establish it with evidence? Where do we get the evidence from? We get it from the Quran and from the Sunnah. Now, if we establish that the Quran through reason, through investigation, through contemplation is indeed the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah then tells us that pray to me, this is basically beneficial to you, this is benefiting you, and these are the different ways that your prayers are being answered, it would then be reasonable to continue praying. Would you accept that? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Have, have you looked into the evidences of the Quran and why it is a miraculous book as okay, it's claimed? Yeah, for, I've looked a lot into it and um, I'm not convinced. What was it that you were not convinced about? Um, all of the arguments uh, did not which, which, which lead one? me to all of them. I've, I've heard, I think I've heard pretty much everything. So I, I'm not convinced by any of them. Which was the one of the biggest arguments that you heard that you were not convinced about? I'd like to I'd like to sort of analyze what it was. was. Um, so, so yes, I, I'll I guess I'll bring up one, but I would just say, regardless of those things, I think there's not to be dismissive, but I think there's still an issue of reasonable disbelief. Um, but yeah, so. In terms of the arguments of the Quran, I, I don't know if it's useful to nitpick because like every uh, every sort of claim, you can go back and forth. You can always accommodate and come with different arguments. But at the end of the day, my honest, because I don't want to go to hell. I mean, that's that would be the worst thing for me to be in hell forever as, you know, someone who's willingly denying. Like, it's, it's a completely against my interests. It would be like the worst thing that I could choose to do. So... When I say that I'm not convinced, you, it's reasonable to just assume that either I, have, I don't have the mental capacity or I don't have the knowledge come across yet, but I, I'm just not convinced. You see, the reason that I'm asking you for specifics is because um, it's precisely when somebody comes up with a contention that, look, I heard this about the Qur'an, and these are the reasons why I was not convinced. That's, a, a, I think, a fair, a, a rational, a reasonable argument that somebody can come forward to, regardless of the merits of the argument. I'm just saying it's a reasonable way of approaching the subject. You see, the, the reason why I don't want to delve too deeply on you know, the prayer aspect or God in interfering in human beings or the, or the universe or not, because those arguments, I believe, are all subjective. Because ultimately, you know, what's reasonable to you, Idris, might not be reasonable to, me, to me and, me and, and vice versa. versa, okay? But ultimately, what matters is, did God actually say those things and therefore should I believe them because I believe God said them? them. That's, yes, the that's the important thing. thing. So so that's, 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 that's why, why I'm, I'm pushing, pushing you a little you bit on the uh, pushing you a little bit on the question of what evidence was presented to you that you found unconvincing, and what were the reasons for that? Okay, I would say that that's a reasonable discussion. So I would say overall, the Quran to me seems more in line with the other stories that people have made up and prophets trying to, you know, pass their books on as divine revelation. I think the fact that the Quran, for example, doesn't know that there was a he talks about the semen and, you know, the creation of man, but doesn't know, understand that there is a, an egg, like a female egg, like it doesn't understand that the sun is a star. I, okay, but I'm not going to claim this, the Quran doesn't understand that, but 
just such an obvious thing that it doesn't mention. Um, but maybe the biggest one for me personally is that uh, the special of creation of Adam is to me easily defeatable from you know molecular genetics. I would say for me that's my that's my personal position. Okay, so look, fantastic. Now we've really moved the conversations on, and I'd like to give Dr. Imran a chance to come in there because he's certain he's a doctor. He's certainly more scientific than I probably will ever be, uh, and he's educated in this field. Uh, and I'm sure he can help you with this thing. So Idris, I, I value uh, the honesty that you've come up with. Uh, I think you're being quite honest and sincere from what I can see, and I, and I, and I do value that. Um, I, I think that we've also moved the conversation over from things that are perhaps more subjective to things that are perhaps a little bit more objective, right? So you've mentioned a few things there, and I'd like Dr. Imran, inshallah, to come in there and we can hopefully progress with the conversation. Dr. Imran, please. So the conversation's actually gone over a lot of ground, um, and I was actually was I was right at the beginning still um, because you made lots of claims within your discussion. And right in the beginning, you said you know your dad was an imam and he knew Arabic and all this, and he was doing dawah. And then, which is you know it's probably irrelevant to the topic. It, it doesn't give any credentials to, as to who your father may or may not have been. And then you say that um, for the last few years, you've come away from this. But let's just looking at the things you're saying. Um, tell me a little bit about that, because I'm trying to understand you, because a lot of what I'm hearing is the thing, the same sort of things that I hear from other people who, who come from maybe an atheistic background. Um, so, for example, the prayer, the, you know, we don't see prayer being responded to. It's not a mechanism. That's basically the principle. You're dealing with another mind, so it's not a mechanism. So it's not subjective. It's not like a scientific experiment, because if I have gravity, that's a mechanism. If I throw the ball, it will land in a certain way, according to a parable. Why? Because it's a mechanism. It's not a mind. As soon as a mind is involved, then the results are no longer predictable. So it's even even applying that doesn't make sense. Um, you know, you, you, you've, you've sort of listed a lot of things. Um, and the main, the main seems to be walking around, you know, uh, sort of juggling around the concept of, um, uh, juggling around the concept of uh, the fact that when uh, when there, when you look around the world, you see suffering. Or uh, yes, yeah, there is. Is there? A, um, but that's not an argument against the creator. It's not, the argument from suffering is an emotive argument. Nothing to do with an argument against creator. Oh, he's, he's dropped out. He's dropped out. So let me, I want to cover some of this ground because I think it's very important. And I think, I don't know why Idris... He's still uh, backstage. Uh, let me see if no, I that's can... another Idris. That's not the same Idris. Oh, is it? Oh, I, I yeah. see. Yeah. Okay. That's I-D-R-I-S-E. So this is another person. So okay. this is very interesting. If he comes back, then please bring him back in because I want to just break this down a little bit because this sure. is, uh, it's important to, uh, just uh, just the way that this was structured. So the first was an appeal to authority. My my father was an imam and he was in Tadawa. He knew Arabic tells me nothing about the person I'm speaking to. And then to launch into uh, uh, rationality, actually in an atheistic worldview, you can't explain rationality. Because why Why do I say that? What happens is that, uh, let me just put the link, because someone is saying he needs the link. So let me just put the link up back, back into the chat before I continue. Is that the, I think the link's there. There we go. So I'm going to just post it again. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So when it, so when it comes to an atheistic worldview, you, there's no explanation for rationality. We are evolved creatures. Uh, we have evolved through a blind uh, process uh, of selection of genetic, random genetic mutations. And what we end up with is we end up, uh, he's come back into this thing. Uh, and what we end up with is, uh, you, you may want to turn your camera off, it's up to you. What we, what we end up with is we end up with a, um, a position where we've arrived to be, uh, uh, the fittest creature to survive. Nothing to do with arriving at the ability to certain truth. So these are two different things. So evolution does not lead you to a certain truth. It leads you to survive. So bringing an evolutionary argument or irration that even that you're rational, no, if you if you believe in a deterministic universe, then you what you have really is that your thoughts are the product of the chemical reactions or the uh, sub subatomic particle reactions that are happening within your brain. And your thoughts are generated from those, and you have no control over them. Just as you have the, the sodium has no control over the way it will react with a chloride or anything else. It's just a purely a, a mechanism. So even your thoughts are not under your control. This is one of the, this is one of the corollaries. This is one of the uh, consequences of believing in an atheistic worldview. And I mentioned I mentioned the sort of emotive argument from uh, 
suffering. So I, so I didn't really see, I really wanted to just understand uh, Idris a little bit more to go, to find out what's going on really. Um, Idris, tell me, my question. So Idris, tell me, you, you said that your father was an imam and that you were, you know, he was well versed. It doesn't tell me much about you. So what, what happened? Did your did you, were you did you have any learning in the religion? Did you were you raised with your father? What happened? Yeah, um, I was raised with my father. Um, I guess I just put that as a background. Um, I'm just familiar with, uh, I guess, mainstream Sunni Islam. I'm just not not like a new Muslim, um, so I'm just familiar with a lot of the arguments. So when you were, because we, Brother Abbas went to quite some depth to explain uh, about how prayer is understood to be uh, that interaction between Allah when we're praying, uh, it was that known to you, or you were unaware, of, or were you aware of that, or weren't aware of it? Yeah, I, I was aware of that. So, so, so yeah. the point I made about when you when you try to when you do experiments, you're essentially dealing with mechanisms. And what you're trying to do is uh, attest the mechanism. And now when you're dealing with a mind, it's no longer a mechanism, and therefore your results are not predictable. So this, even the prayer test, is it's not something that would, it wouldn't, it's not something that is used, can be used to measure this, because you're dealing with an individual as opposed to dealing with a mind, let's just use the word mind, uh, a consciousness as opposed to dealing with a mechanism. Do you, do you understand, you understand the distinction? The distinction? Um, I don't know, I guess I'm not really in deep into philosophy, but... I I guess for my small limit, limited knowledge in that area, I would just expect prayer to work. And when people say that, I guess the Islamic narrative is that, you know, if the prayer is not accepted, then you get something better. It's not good for you. But that's exactly what I would say if I were a false prophet. No, I'll tell you. I tell, so this is the thing. So it's interesting because you said that you your understanding of the prayer is that if you pray, it's accepted. This is not actually the Muslim understanding of the prayer. That's what I, the point that I was making, and actually, everyone, you know, I have young children, and they're aware of this, the how how prayer works, because we explain it to them. Um, the other thing is actually is that um, uh, sorry, what's the point the, the point that you made about that? This is what you say if you're a false prophet. No, I will tell you what you would do if you're a false prophet. What you would do is if you, if there's a, a an eclipse of the sun, when your own child dies on that at that same time. What you would do is you would go out and and, the, and then the people are coming and they're saying, oh, look, this man, he said he's the prophet of God and his son died and the sky went dark. What you would then do if you is a, if you're a prophet or you're a fake person making it up is you'd come out and say, see, see, this is this is evidence that can't you see that I'm a prophet of God. My child died and the sky went dark. This happened it's in happened the life, in of the life of upon him where his where his son died, Ibrahim. And uh, may God be pleased with him. He, he died as a young child. And there was a, a solar eclipse at the same time. And then the, the prophet, peace be upon him, heard the people saying the same thing. See, he's a prophet of God and the sky went dark. No, I'm, and I'm then, familiar with and, that. And, and you know, I'm, I'm explaining to you because what you're doing is you're, you're making a character attack. So let me explain. What did the prophet, peace be upon him, do at that, at that time? He went and he stood up on the pulpit and, his whole, and he called the people and he explained to them the sun and the moons are the signs of God and they do not rise or set for the death of any man. He clarified for them, although you are seeing this as an evidence of me being a prophet, it's not. It's a natural phenomena that has nothing to do with any human being. This is what I would expect from someone who is a truthful, sincere individual. So I, I don't accept your, uh, uh, your, you know, the thing that you're putting. No, I'm telling you my personal I belief. I understand. I understand. I understand. So what I'm explaining is No, I get it. But even that narrative, no, I don't. Finish my sentence. Finish my sentence. Okay. What, what well, I'm explaining what I'm... to you is that your personal belief doesn't concord with the history, recorded history of the Muslims. It doesn't record it accord with it. Now, so the all of the history suggests, even from uh, Orientalist scholars, historians, that they regard the Prophet upon him as being an, a, a a sincere individual. Some say he was sincerely mistaken. Some say, whatever they say, they don't allege nefarious character or anything like this at all. They don't do that. So, so even when you're res responding in this way, I'm surprised. It doesn't really fit. Uh, it doesn't for me. It doesn't fit with someone who has grown up with Islam, one understanding of the life of the Prophet peace be upon him. But so, what what happened when when did you start to find that you were going away from this? Uh, because you know, you said you don't do philosophy. You don't really know much about philosophy. But you were mentioning 
all these philosophical arguments and even divine hiddenness and even you're talking about a reasonable unbelief or a, a unreasonable belief you're mentioning all these sort of quite specific things which are all philosophical um so what what happened uh, idris when did you find that you were when talk, tell me at a time when you were quite firm yes i'm a muslim this is what i believe and you were practicing, and then you. When did that switch happen? What was going on, if you don't mind? Yeah, yeah. I think. I think once I realized that I, I didn't have good reasons for my belief, and especially in grad school, I started learning more about critical thinking, and I just realized that I, I was making a lot of assumptions that were unjustified and unwarranted. So give me an example of one of the assumptions that you made that were unjustified, unwarranted. That sort of so one of the early ones that led you on this path. What was it? Well, like like I was going to say before, though, I, I don't think those are. I mean, if you insist, I can go into that. But I think the one of the biggest things I just don't believe the Quran is from God. I don't. I don't. It seems more consistent with people like the other religions. People just kind of making things up. But and I'd say, you know, one of the big things are. Just the Quran doesn't seem consistent with an all-knowing being, especially the fact that the special creative creation of Adam does not comport with modern molecular genetics. Yeah, but this is a this is a basic misunderstanding of science. Okay, but that's it may be. No, 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 if you're studying, so let's try and let me just try and walk you through this. If you are, science is a, a natural, the basis of science is that there are no non natural explanations. There are no. Yeah, but one, one, one second, brother. One, my friend, I'm going to lay the foundation for you. Okay. Because then okay. I'm going to do, do the science in a moment. So if there are no non natural explanations and any evidence given to you, whatever the evidence might be, how are you going to interpret that? See, I don't know, brother, but the thing is, the, what we see in our, in our DNA, like endogenous retroviral DNA, you know, the chromosome 2 fusion, it's like God is trying to trick us to show that we came, we had common ancestry with other apes, but he's telling us that we didn't. So it seems like a very deceitful God to put all these um, evidences in our DNA and yeah. then yeah. ask us to deny it. Yeah, so this is a problem because one of the because your approach is very emotive. You're not dealing with the facts. Oh, do you know about endogenous retroviral sequences? Yes, I do. Do you know how closely they align with chimpanzees and other? Are you, are you, are you a geneticist? Excuse me. Are you a geneticist? Yes. You are a geneticist, yeah? Okay, tell me, let me so let me ask you this question. And this is the, uh, this is where the problem is. This is where, it's where your studies have taken you. you you're now in, in the scientism realm, yeah? The, now I want to ask you a question. You've, there, was a, there was an idea, there was a recent, uh, a recent discovery of uh, a, a recent change in uh, the interpretation of uh, some fossils. Are you aware of that? Related to plants and turtles, are you aware of that? I'm not not aware of you said plants and turtles. Yeah. No. Uh, oh, very, oh, very interesting. So there were some fossils that were thought to have belonged to uh, early plants. That I, I can't remember when they were dated from. You know, millennia, uh, hundreds of uh, millions of years ago. And this is what this was stuck in some categorization system, which is you know you would call, call it uh, the evolutionary tree, uh, just an arbitrary method <laughs> of categorization. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, after after careful study of this, uh, they, they try to look for the veins of the leaves, uh, where the where the, uh, the, the the sort of the fluid would be carried, and what they noted was actually this is not we're not seeing that. What we're seeing something more akin to the shell structure of turtles, uh, particularly baby turtles. Now what happened? Now what happened is that they've um, what's happened is that they've uh, reassessed this and put it somewhere else taken this piece of evidence and they've stuck it somewhere else in their arbitrary tree of life so and this is the the, the point here is is that the, the evidence they did, didn't they didn't they didn't they did not challenge the theory what they challenged that what they did is they just recategorized things so the the but the basis of evolutionary study would be it genetics or fossil or even fossils is is what what is the assumption 
There's a lot of assumptions, but um, there's how many how many you choose? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You there's tell me common, how many common. Uh, first, first, first assumption is the first assumption is is that um, there are no non-natural explanations. Everything has to be explained naturally. naturally. A second assumption is homology. That similar things have similar origins. Do you disagree with those? Um, no, so there, there's convergent evolution. Similar things can have different um, origins. Yeah. yeah. But as I, a lay, I, lay, that, as a lay that, person... That, 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 that's that's how you play I'm talking about homeoplasia. Talking about homeoplasia. Talking about homeoplasia. For, first, let's deal with the, the things that are, that are the foundations of the evolution. The first thing is, is that you there are no non-natural explanations. Every explanation has to be a natural one. That's the basic foundation of all science. Every single field, that's the basic assumption. You agree with that or you disagree, disagree with, with that? that? Yeah, yeah, of course, because science doesn't deal with, you know, supernatural ghosts and all that. That doesn't that's, make sense. So therein lies the answer to your question. There, that's, that's the answer, the answer to your question. question. No, the it doesn't, tool, brother. Let me explain it. The tool that you're using to measure a supernatural claim is one that can only measure natural claims because the limit of that, for the framework of that tool is within nature only. So when every time you see a piece of evidence, the only thing you can do if you're using science is the only thing you can do is you can fit it into that. You can, you can fit, fit it in. into that uh, framework that you have. Do you understand? Kind of, but I feel like you're dancing around the enormous amount of evidence in endogenous retroviral sequence alignment between humans and apes. That's just an insanely strong amount of evidence. It's like looking at your grandmother's picture and someone saying, that's a frog. Like it's, it's almost absurd to deny yeah, that yeah, and just yeah, appeal yeah. to scientism. So which experiment have you conducted? To, uh, tell me about it. Um, well, I'm, you know, uh, there's, there's so many, uh, this is human endogenous retroviral sequences. So there's, there's a certain class of, uh, there's a certain class of, um, retroviruses that can infect the germ cells and they can leave sequences. And these, when they're in a germ cell, they'll be passed on to offspring. And we find that um, apes, especially chimpanzees, they align perfectly where the chance that this could be random is astronomical. So to just deny that is almost absurd. And I understand, like, Muslims tend to assume God first and then basically... Yeah. Now, you're making, now you're being unfair. So the the point here is is that what your um, what I asked you was what experiments have you conducted that to to, 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 that, to, to determine this for yourself? No. It's sequence alignment, sir. Which which which, 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 which experiments have you conducted? You can point to me to the paper, to the paper that you've done. On, I, I don't have yeah. the paper offhand, but you can Google Scholar oh, yeah. endogenous yeah. retroviral sequence alignment. Which which, which one is one you one conducted? Which experiment that I conduct directly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Check check the I'm, I'm, I have not peer reviewed that. Have you have conducted, conducted experiments? experiments? Have to, I conducted other experiments? experiments? No, have no, you have conducted, you conducted experiments, experiments to determine endogenous retroviral sequences and comparing them between humans and apes? Have you done that? Published. Why, why, why are we going there? Because, because I'm, I'm talking about. about because the point here is, you're missing my point. point. I'm going to mute you because uh, it's a big echo there. Yeah. So the point here is, is that if you're the, any data that's a, that's that's obtained about anything, even in this particular case, you can only fit it into your. Assalamualaikum, Jordan. How are you doing? You okay? Waalaikum salam. Lovely to see you, brother. Good to see you. Uh, sorry, I'm just in the middle of saying something. <laughs> so, no. so the only only place that you can. Uh, the only place that you can fit this information into your paradigm is going to be in your homology paradigm, because that's the basic paradigm within um, within the evolution. Yeah, within. Now, there is no other place. No, to put you're, it. You're, you're, the conclusion. So one second, one second. So the conclusion is, it's almost determined for you. To confuse us. Sorry. What did you say? I, I, I didn't hear you, uh, Idris, your sound dropped out. Idris, we can't hear you. I don't know, my audio seems to have left, but my question was, why would God leave this evidence 
in order to confuse people like me that I assume that I am a uh, non-resistive non-believer. That's, a, that's an, a very technical, uh, philosophical term. I like that the fact that you used it, even though you're not familiar with evil, uh, philosoph philosophy. The point, the point here, brother Idris, is that it's the same thing. <clears throat> These are not confusing. If you understand, if you understand the the difference between methodolog methodological naturalism and philosophical naturalism, because you're not making this distinction, you're, you're, the, 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 you're, you're, the assumption that you seem to be making, I mean, I, we need a further, deeper conversation, but the assumption that you seem to be making is that whatever science tells you is true. This is scientism. And the only way to, tr through tr to truth is through science. And you're disregarding the underlying foundational principles. These are already set mechanism so if you have if i see this evidence i ha in evolution it has to fit into this particular place because there are no non-natural explanations and we determine things by homology so the brother's left again no i think so he's I think, having issues with the I, internet i think what we should do is maybe ask him to come back when his mic is a bit better yeah. and we yeah. can discuss further but the, so the, the point here was the reason that i was asking uh, about the um what experiments that he you had done or he had done was simply because if you haven't done the experiments you're essentially taking somebody else's word and you're and this is really a type of acceptance of testimony peer review testimony however you want to frame it it's basically a type of testimony that you're uh, accepting and this is why it's really important that so when you're making these claims about science science then you need to understand the remit of science the limitations of science and the foundational assumptions of science so i am a methodological uh, naturalist but not a philosophical naturalist i utilize what works from the science but i and i but i don't re regard that as being something that informs my um my metaphysical world my worldview of how everything is because i understand that the uh the evolution or, or so the scientific paradigm, it can explain um, meaning, it can explain value, which is why the brother mentioned that he was a, a, a you know, a cosmological nihilist, someone who, there's no real meaning, there's no real value, there's no, tr nothing, nothing really matters. Uh, I mean, the life of your child, the life of your parent, uh, whether or not you're alive or dead, nothing matters. Because ultimately it's pointless. You're just a blip in the uh, a blink of an eye in the geological time frame of the earth. You 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 have no value. You have no meaning. And on the corollary is no human beings have any value or meaning, and therefore everything goes. And it's and it's a t and this is where it leads you to a nihilistic place, which is a terrible place to be, uh, if I'm really honest with you. And it's it's uh, you know if you're if you're a nihilist, then why even bother talking to anyone else? Nothing. It doesn't matter if anyone believes anything.